In the race to conquer space, what can stop SpaceX's ambitions? Ironically, the biggest obstacle is not technological, but rather an environmental bureaucracy, the Federal Aviation Admission. Recently, we received the latest updates on the FAA licenses for Falcon 9 and Starship's upcoming flights. Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before getting into the main content, we want to tell you, Thank you so much for watching these videos. The voiceover artists, the editors, the script writers, we all appreciate it. We would not be here without your support. Having said that, we are very close to hitting the 100,000 subscription mark. So if you happen to be watching this video and you enjoy our daily content, please press that subscribe button. It keeps us motivated to keep making this content for you to enjoy and also help support the space community. All right, let's continue. Okay, for quite some time, FAA has been known as a key regulatory body. Every flight in the U.S., including those hitting space, have to get approved by the FAA. This is a mandatory regulation that no one is exempt from in the U.S. This principle also applies to rocket explosions. In addition to the investigating efforts of the companies involved, FAA plays a crucial role in overseeing the process. They hold the ultimate authority to decide whether a company and its rockets can return to normal operations. So, recently, there was a booster explosion from SpaceX that prompted the FAA to step in and conduct an investigation once again. On the morning of August 28th, a Falcon 9 rocket successfully launched 21 of SpaceX's Starlink satellites into orbit on the record-breaking 23rd mission of its first stage. During the landing process, the first stage descent seemed normal until the touchdown, when more flames than usual appeared around the rocket's base as it neared the ship's deck. A landing leg immediately broke upon, and the booster, obscured by fire and smoke, tipped over the side of the drone ship, falling into the Atlantic Ocean. After a successful ascent, Falcon 9's first stage booster tipped over following touchdown on the ace short fall of Gravitas drone ship, SpaceX said on X. Teams are assessing the booster's flight data and status. The landing mishap ended a streak of 267 consecutive successful booster recoveries since Feb 2021. It was the 23rd flight for the first stage B-1062 and also its final launch and landing. This sets a new reusable record as SpaceX strives to certify the Falcon 9's first stage for up to 40 flights each. Speaking about the incident, Elon Musk was not too surprised. He responded under the post about the booster exploding. Now we figure on what went wrong to drive the landing failure rate above 1 in 1,000, then 1 in 10,000, 1 in a million, etc. Elon aims to take a systematic approach to improve reliability and safety during the development of landing technology. Initially, the goal is to reduce the failure rate to below 1 in 1,000. Once that's achieved, the next target's to hit 1 in 10,000, then 1 in a million, and so on. This process requires thorough research into the root cause of each failure, learning from mistakes, and continuously improving processes and technology. This approach is akin to losing the battle to win the war in complex and high-risk operations like rocket launches and landings. Although SpaceX is conducting its investigation, the FAA is closely overseeing. In fact, the FAA has banned SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets, including the Polaris Dawn booster, until the investigation is complete and corrective actions are approved. A return to fly to the Falcon 9 booster rocket is based on the FAA determining that any system, process, or procedure related to the anomaly does not affect public safety, FAA said in a statement. In addition, SpaceX may need to request and receive approval from the FAA to modify its license that incorporates any corrective actions and meets all other licensing requirements, the agency said. It's unclear how long this is going to take. However, a relatively quick resolution is possible. Eric Berger, a pretty well-known space journalist, offered some reassurance to the space community. For those hand-wringing about Falcon 9 getting grounded, I don't expect the FAA investigation to impact the SpaceX launch manifest too much. This is probably not a week's thing, more like days, maybe hours. Indeed, SpaceX works very quickly. The company returned the Falcon 9 in flight last month just 15 days after the second stage of the rocket experienced an anomaly, resulting in the loss of 23 Starlinks. The incident on Wednesday morning was not as serious, only affecting the rocket's landing. The upper stage of the Falcon 9 successfully delivered the Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit as planned. However, even a few days of grounding could impact a very important launch that SpaceX is readying for, and that's Polaris Dawn, which is going to send four people into orbit on a pioneering five-day mission, including the first-ever private spacewalk. A scheduled launch attempt for this mission early on August 27th got canceled after a helium leak was detected in the ground system supporting the rocket. Then a second launch attempt of the vehicle early August 28th got canceled just hours before liftoff due to weather. Meteorologists were concerned about sea conditions for the Crew Dragon's landing three to five days after the launch when the spacecraft returned to Earth in waters near Florida. 
Our launch criteria are heavily constrained by forecasted splashdown weather conditions, Jared Isaacman wrote on X on Tuesday evening. With no ISS rendezvous and limited life support consumables, we must be absolutely sure of reentry weather before launching. As of now, conditions are not favorable tonight or tomorrow, so we'll assess day by day. The Polaris Dawn mission could be launched as early as the morning of Friday, August 30th at around 3.38 a.m. Eastern Time from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. However, this depends on two things, the weather and the FAA. On the other hand, we can see SpaceX seems to feel quite comfortable understanding the landing incident of the Starlink launch on Wednesday morning, and it's not overly concerned about the FAA's investigation, as if they're certain of the outcome. What do you think? Feel free to let us know in the comments if you have a differing opinion. In addition to the Falcon 9 case, FAA is also responsible for evaluating the fifth Starship flight. However, in contrast to SpaceX's readiness, the FAA has yet to make significant progress in updating the approval process. Fortunately, a positive update from the FAA was recently released. The FAA is evaluating SpaceX's proposed license modification for its Flight 5 mission. SpaceX must meet all safety, environmental, and other licensing requirements prior to FAA authorization. Safety will drive the timeline. Please contact SpaceX for info about the proposed changes to its license. The FAA's evaluation will review SpaceX's entire launch process, but above all, the agency will focus on the new aspects of the upcoming Starship flight. First, SpaceX will test restarting the engines while the spacecraft's already in space, a test that's been planned for a long time but has been repeatedly delayed. Secondly, for the first time, they'll attempt to catch the Super Heavy booster with a Mechazilla arm system. Both these missions are groundbreaking, promising major advances, but also carrying some significant risks. Given these new experiments, the FAA needs to conduct a thorough assessment of potential environmental impacts in related systems. They'll also review the risk mitigation measures proposed by SpaceX. However, this evaluation process may be quicker than previous flight, when SpaceX first had Starship damage the launch pad or perform a hot staging maneuver. If everything goes smooth, the FAA might complete the evaluation process by early next month. But most importantly, the key goal of this launch is to catch the Super Heavy booster. Musk has repeatedly hinted that the company will attempt to catch the Super Heavy booster in the next flight, which will also accelerate the upper stage of Starship to near orbital velocity for another re-entry demonstration over the Indian Ocean. If SpaceX succeeds with the next Starship flight, these arms will close together to catch the first stage booster as it descends back to Earth and slows down to hover just above the launch pad. This method of rocket recovery differs significantly from how SpaceX lands the smaller Falcon 9 boosters, which have landing legs to touch down on offshore platforms or concrete landing sites onshore. According to SpaceX, catching the rocket with large metal arms, sometimes called Mechazilla arms or chopsticks, will reduce the turnaround time for reusing boosters and simplify their design. SpaceX has launched the nearly 400-foot-tall Starship rocket four times, most recently in June, when the 233-foot-tall Super Heavy booster made a precise landing in the Gulf of Mexico, just off Starbase coast. During the same flight in June, the upper stage of the Starship flew halfway around the Earth and re-entered the atmosphere over the Indian Ocean. The vehicle survived re-entry and landed in open waters northwest of Australia. This flight was the first time either part of the Starship rocket returned to Earth intact, but SpaceX did not recover the booster or the spacecraft. Since that launch, SpaceX has made several changes to Starship. They've replaced thousands of heat shield tiles on Starship for the next mission and upgraded the design for a new version of the prototype, of course, featuring the most powerful and compact Raptor 3 engines. Eventually, SpaceX wants to recover the ship by landing it on land, similar to the boosters. But Elon has previously said he expects it's going to take at least a few more flights before SpaceX is ready to take that step. SpaceX's long-term goal is to rapidly reuse both major components of Starship, unlocking lower launch costs and enabling all the rocket's revolutionary capabilities, like routine daily flights to orbit and regular heavy cargo and crewed missions up to Mars. That's still years away, though. In the short to medium term, SpaceX has contracted with NASA to use Starship as a crewed lunar lander for the Artemis program. SpaceX also wants to use Starship to launch the next-gen Starlink Internet satellites, but Starship is still in its initial testing phase, with SpaceX first focusing on getting the rocket into space, then recovering the Super Heavy booster. The next steps include recovering the ship intact, demonstrating its ability to restart its engines in space, and testing the refueling technology needed for future missions to the Moon and Mars. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.